What's up, it's your boy Jacob back at you with another DD2 episode, guys. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about how I've been gearing up, and hopefully, you know, that's gonna help out lots of other people who, you know, watch this video and play DD2. Because, yeah, I know gearing up, even with the patch out now, they kinda made it tricky. You know, regardless, the game's gonna be a grind, so let's talk about. You know, some of the things you just really gotta focus on if you wanna gear up quickly in Dungeon Defenders 2. So, I'm gonna be, like I said in my other video, I'm gonna be doing a time lapse also. I'm not gonna bore you guys with everything, but let's start off here where it's kind of important. So, if you're talking about relics, right? I'm not going to tell you which relics you should use or anything like that because it all depends on your strategies, how you want to play the game, and the characters you're using. So that you guys can figure it out on your own. But I will tell you how to get better relics of all varieties and everything else. So see, I got these relics here on this character. Let's see, we gotta figure out what our average number is, and you don't have to be a math genius to do this. Like, I suck at math, you know, but I, I can still do all this. So we got about, what, 3,500? That's, you know, that's over halfway to 3,500 if you're looking at 3,000 to 3,500, right? That's, that's pretty much over halfway. Now, here we got one that's over that, so that's even better for our average because... I'll get to that in a minute. This one's over the average of 3,500 so far, right? So now we have a competing average. This is like a way of I, bleh, is a way I like to put it. I'm trying to talk too damn fast. There's another one that's close to 3,500. So is that one. That one's under, like just under. It's about halfway, but you know, look, I don't got them all super jacked up yet. Um, that one's over the halfway mark to 3,500. So, this one's over 3,500. That one's pretty damn close to 3,500. Same with this one, it's over that halfway mark of 3,250. Same with this one. Same with this one. Now, if we look in here, that one's over the 3,500 mark. That's over. That's just a little under, but it's over the 3,250 mark. And that one's pretty close to 3,500. And I'm using 3,500 as my average, right? Like, the average to explain how the game's gonna generate loot when I do the time-lapse run here in the video. Uh, in a little bit. Because it all depends on which characters you have in your deck. Like, see, I got all kinds of other characters, right? But it's just the ones in here that the game's going to look at all your gear that's equipped to them. So for relics, we'll say I have an average of about 3,500. Looking at, as you guys seen, looking at all my relics of these four characters equipped in my deck. Now, if we take a look at the weapons, which will be really quick. She's got, I could tell you right, guys right now, she's, my Huntress got my strongest weapon so far. That's 1951. Now if we look at my monk, he's got a weapon that's not too far off. It's about, you know. See, the average is hard to say because of her weapon. So he's like about one or two hundred under so far. We might as well say around there. Like I said, I'm not the greatest with math. She, see, her weapon's around the same as the monk's. And then I got this tome here, the Scorched Tome of Molten Brimstone from the Wayfarer after the yeah, Unholy Catacomb or... Yeah, Unho Unholy Catacombs Incursion. But yeah, I got it to roll with uh, 1,800. So my average, you might as well say, is about 1,700 for these four characters equipped. Okay? Now the average for the armor, you know, if you take a look, it's, let's see, 1221, 1165, 1233, so on her it's about 1200, 
And I gotta do the averages on each character's armor individually because they're not all on par yet. But this, my monk here, he's, all his armor's about 1200 also, which is good. Helps uh, me explain this a little better. See, that's lower, that's 1020. That one's 1053, 1056, so 1052. So this is actually kind of good. This will help me explain something else too. Now, if we look at my Abyss Lord, he's got, you know, close to 1200, over 1200. Not too far off. It's 103 away from 1200, 108. But her right here, she's going, her armor, as far as the armor, like, drops, you know, the boots, gloves, chest pieces, and the helmets. As far as those armor drops go, when it drops them in the map, She's going to be the thing that kind of affects it. And what I mean by that is um, when something drops, so say if a chest piece drops, if it happens to be close to these values you see here, 1054 or 1056, like basically around the 1050 mark, it's because of her, okay? If it's in a higher range value, say for example, like the 1200, you know, area, closer to that it's gonna be because of these three right here the abyss lord the monk and my huntress now that applies to uh, all this stuff too okay so if any relics doesn't matter whether it's a medallion it's, or those orbs spheres whatever you want to call them the totems the marks you know doesn't matter what it is it's the value, the main stat value you're looking at. And if that's anything like kind of comparing to what you're seeing, you know, on your current hero deck, then, you know, you know that you're getting close to that. But if it's dropping below that and you're not seeing anything higher, maybe you should try going to a higher uh, chaos tier. If you're in chaos tiers, that is. If you're not in the chaos tiers yet well maybe you should try like you know i don't know if you're stuck still in campaign that is maybe hired mode would be a good suggestion but yeah looking at these values right we're gonna take that all that we're gonna go into a chaos match uh, right now i'm grinding chaos four guys I don't have a truly sound strategy for it. Whoa, that was a crazy leg spike. I don't have a truly sound strategy that I feel comfortable, uh, you know, showing everybody on YouTube that, you know, if they're gonna try it, you know, I want it to be helpful even if it doesn't succeed the first time. I want it to help them succeed later on and make it a little easier for the grind. So we're going to go into a private game, hopefully get a good match, and I will see you guys there. Here we are at the throne room. Well, Assault on throne room. And yeah, I've done this map, so I do have an actually decent strategy I'd like to showcase. So this is kind of killing two birds with one stone. Well, it's actually killing one... killing the sh strategy showcase, and I got two... Uh, quests I need to do for just one so yeah it works out just nice so I'll show you guys I'll set everything up and then I will get to the explaining on why I chose this strategy because some people might think well like that's kind of crazy you know yeah, crazy is my style though it works for me So I kind of, I'm not going to de deny, you know, I'll be completely honest with my viewers. Um, I rely on these uh, Maw of the Earth Drakes. When it comes to the maps, you know, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable using my uh, skeletal orcs. Because I really like them because, yeah, the Maw of the Earth Drakes good for stunning enemies, which can greatly help with like siege rollers and all the other bosses, you know, slow them down from tearing that wall down right away. But I like the Skeletal Orcs because of the Electric Fingers ability, and if you got a Drenching Strike Shards equipped to your character, 
then, oh yeah, you can do some nice damage. So just want to make sure that, you know. See, like, I might have put that over too far. Let's just put it like that. Now, I'm not really worried about them, like, you know, climbing over my barricade or any craziness like that. I, I tested this strategy, I've done it lots. So I know this one will work for people if they work at it and build up their uh, their defenses and stuff. Or you can use other defenses, like other barricades of your choice. It doesn't have to be these ones, right? It can be whatever you want. Just make sure you got an EV2, that's all I can say. Because an EV2 is a big part of this strategy. So, like I said, you don't necessarily need the Lava Master, I just like the beefy walls he provides. Because those aren't even upgraded and they got 1,679,355 health, that's pretty good. We're going to put this first node here, second one here, and the third up here. Yeah, I'm just explaining the strategy. And then I'm going to time lapse it so you guys don't have to watch it all. Like you get to watch it, but it'll be a lot faster, more enjoyable. So the same thing, we're going to put them, you know, on a bit of an angle like this. Because that, you'll see why in a second. And I kind of use these little benches right here as markers for each uh, lane here. And that's going to get a lot of the ranged enemies, right, that are going to be taking shots at my... Uh, walls there. But see, I put those real close together because they're going to help kill off the enemies here, but I'm also going to be, you know, running around making sure my walls are tip-top and staying alive. And they help uh, attack the enemies coming in here. It's the same over on that other side there. I'll show you guys that real quick. Same dealio. Got the one up there. So we're going to go over here now. gonna put these ones about right about there same thing except this one's gonna go on a bit of an angle and this one's gonna go right about here and that way they got you know double protection too same thing on this side stick your weapon manny anywhere put the nodes not too far away, because even with deadly strikes in this uh, relic equipped to this one, it uh, yeah, it doesn't really reach too too much further. But it's still pretty damn good if you ask me, because it covers them. Now, if you remember, guys, I had this character, I had the dryad here, and I'm gonna keep her in there because this is gonna help for to show you for the comparison. And I'm also going to use some of her defenses, believe it or not. The first thing first, I got to put a world tree. <laughs> it's complete. I, I wish I had a deadly strike shard in this. I don't got too much goodies for her world tree yet, but I will get them. I got a shielding guard because it is a barricade, you know. So I figured and health pylon because sometimes I place these world trees really close to these and but yeah when I get world tree McBuffers in whenever I do obtain that shard I'll definitely be putting that in there and I'll be probably putting a deadly strike shard in there for sure to increase this range now I tried a couple different things I tried slimes on this I tried bees they all work so far though, my favorite's the bees, because I do have a deadly strike shard in this, and look at the range on that. You see the little line over there? Like, way over there. So we're gonna put this one right there. And this one right there. Now let me show you guys this. That's some nice coverage with the bees. Like, they cover a nice area. That's very excellent. So, to be on the safe side of things, though, 
we are going to put in a sky guard to help kill off those air enemies that get too close to our thing. And that way we have maxed out the cap perfectly, which is excellent. Now, normally I would upgrade stuff, but with this strategy, yeah, it, it kind of leaves me with just enough DU for wall repairs. So I will get started now and I'll begin the time lapse and then I will see you guys after time lapse, which will be after the last wave and everything's dead.
guys here we are back at the tavern after doing that little bit of a time-lapse run there see what we can get and that was chaos 4 like i said that's where i'm currently at grinding well where i feel comfortable grinding right now until i move on up so the first things first let's do the relic comparisons here so like i said the relic compare average i have going for me right now is about 3500 okay so let's take a look at some relics. See, there's a good example with the new patch installed, right? They put out there the other day. Uh, that one's 3,900. What's this mark over here? See, that's more around my average of 3,500. Right there. That's, the, once again, the game throwing me, you know, some better gear. I wish that I had a purpose for orbs because, you know, the, like, these aren't bad. Aren't bad at all. But you know what I mean? Like, it's these ones right here, though, that are... Like, these are kind of low. Well, I guess for an orb, that's really good at my, my point in progress here in the game. But there's another example of that being a little bit higher than 3500 average another good example and that's an even better example let's see yeah that's all the shards I have for all the characters let's see if we can get a abyss knight's bargain I already have one of those earth toss I have that too I believe let's see earth shatter tower is a yeah I have that one already I already got those shards, nice as they are. Let's see here, this is all the pet stuff I got. Now, this is all the gear that's worth looking at if you are trying to gear up, okay? Because as you've seen, I've proven that if you can figure out your average rating, you'll definitely know uh, what to expect for gear drops until you don't see anything higher than you know what you have currently equipped and then that's basically a good indicator or sign to try and move on to the next chaos tier so if, like for me eventually once my gear is like about all well, my relics at least I'll be happy with you know being about 4,000 minimal if I can hit that oh yeah I'll definitely be happy and I'll definitely be trying to grind some chaos 5 see what that's like but see we got things like this right so that's going off our higher weapon average so we'll start with the weapons I should say so 1951 1845 and it's more closer to his but his scorched tome of molten brimstone is better so see ya bye book that one's just the same so the brimstone is once again better that's a little higher, but, you know, I'll wait until there's, like, a, about a hero damage 2000 stat value. Then I'll be comfortable switching. Now, see, this is a good indicator of the higher hero's armor. Right? The 1200 average I was talking about before I started the time-lapse run there. This is around our 1200 average, okay? Same with that. That's pretty, that's, you know, it's over 1100, so that's pretty close to our 1200 average too. Same with that. So this is the game basically evaluating those four heroes I have equipped in my deck right now. And for as far as, you know, armor goes. And it's looking at the average value, right? And it sees there's an average value of around 1200. So now the game's going to start dropping things around those values and a little higher. And eventually when I swap those out, right, all those four characters, because they're the main four I keep on there all the time when for grinding, so this is a little easier. If you try and do this with multiple characters, yeah, it, it just becomes a, a mess and it's really difficult. So pick four characters. If you only have four, then you're already set for making things easier. But if you have more than four, pick four that you really like using in your deck commonly, you know? 
Like, sure, you might have other characters where you pull them out once in a while to basically lay down a couple defenses or traps or something, right? That's not a problem, but if you're going to do that, make sure to switch back to the four that have the highest gear if you're grinding for gear, right? Or so you're not going to get higher drops, you know, from the RNG. Now, as you guys can see, these are all pretty nice. They're all around the 1200. And these ones... These is, this is like the lower rated stuff. Like, I have all my relics go in here, but I also have the lower rated stuff go in here too because I just sell them off usually. But these ones, you know, they're around that 1200 rating too, which is not bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep these ones, right? We'll get rid of all those other things you don't want, basically. And then what we're gonna do, so I'll start with these right here. Now, what I usually do, just so I'm not just saying things, I'll actually show you guys what I legitimately do. So maybe it'll help out even more if I go into in-depth detail on this process. Like I said, I was going to in the other episode. Now, I'm looking, I have a medallion here. I have three marks, right? So let's look at the marks. Apparently, the lightning strike aura has been increased really well. So I have some, I have three decent marks, and I don't use my lightning strike auras a lot, so I'm not too finicky on what I put in there. So I'm more than likely just to give it, you know, some defense power too, right? This would be an excellent choice. So basically we're going to find that one. I'm going to keep that for now, but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to lock it so I know which one I actually unequipped and which, you know, like I swapped out already. Now I do plan on using my monk. See that medallion's not bad, but like it has higher value, but I'm willing to stick with this one for a bit until I at least find one that has two shard slots so I can put those two shards in there. So what I'll do is when I see something like that, I'll switch, I'll look around, you know, see if there's a character I'm not too finicky about, like what I have in there at the time. And if I don't see anything right, then basically what I do, like maybe, I only have one shard there, and it is higher, so that would actually be the thing, smarter choice there. So what I'll do is I'll remove that shard, right? Go back in, replace it. And now we got that one and I'll unlock that one too. So I have a totem here. Yeah, it has higher stat value, but it doesn't have any shard slots. So I don't like that. It's going. No, I have no use for that to be honest. But we do have another mark here with a rating of 3700, which we probably could make use of. Let's see here. It's so like even that's a bit of a an upgrade, right? And that'll help increase our average by that little bit. So now that was a that's a, my example for everyone of a, you know, when it comes to looking at the relics, like you don't have to stop after every match and look and do this. Just do it like every three or four on, you know, get used to that pattern, and more than likely you'll see big improvement in a short amount of time when you're grinding in this game. Now let's go check out that armor and I'll show you some good examples here so remember guys I was saying that she's kind of the negative here she's not like a negative character but her average rating for her armor you know her gear here is kind of a negative influence on the overall average rating of the four heroes in my deck so now I get to remedy that so first thing what I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna have her you know like you know highlighted just so it's 
the game's going to compare the loot with that character. Now I'll look at the boots, and I'll remember the highest stat value, 1210. And I'll just look through the boots, oh, there's a higher value, value 1259. So that's the highest value, right? And then I'll look, I'll usually look over, see what shards I do currently have slotted into my, the characters aren't gear. And I'll say, okay, so in this case, it's a two shard, two shard, right? Like they both have two shard slots, it's not a problem. So I'll just quickly, you know, unslot that. I'll bounce over to this one, go up here. And it highlights the one you recently took out. So it's real easy to do this quickly and efficiently. So everything we swap on this character, keep in mind, is going to be a massive improvement compared to what she currently has. So we just did her boots, right? Now we're just going to ignore the boots, look at the gloves. 1243, 1213, 1202. So even if this wasn't, you know, epic rarity, or mythical, whatever you guys want to call it, this would be the overall better choice. So we're going to swap that out. And if there's multiple shards, you know, just go to unequip all and make it quicker. So you don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing this stuff if you're grinding, right? So we put her Shroom Bloom shard back in. Shroom Doom shard back in. And since there's a third slot, if we really wanted to, you know, we could give her a construction shard. And then, you know, max it out later on. So, now, so far, let's look at what we improved. Like, right there, that's a massive improvement, right? 1259, 1243 compared to 1053, 1020. So now let's look at the headpiece. There's 1194, but that's the only one. But still, that's a massive improvement. We'll take it. And we're going to, once again, quickly bounce back and forth, do the... Uh, swapping out here and now the last thing for her upgrades is the chess piece which this one like I don't even care what the other substats are I'm looking at the main stat at top just so everyone knows sure like this one has hero crit damage and hero health this one has ability power and hero health but the thing is you got to keep in mind guys is when you're trying to grind in Dungeon Defenders 2, and this is the most important thing I can say in this video, you have to keep in mind that until you get to Chaos 7, you're not gonna be, you can't be overly finicky or picky about those substats. You just wanna look at that higher primary stat value at the top, because that's what the average RNG is based on for when you get gear drops. So if, like, you know, like I said, if the hero health can be whatever, the ability power can be whatever on these two pieces, like the hero crit damage too, as you guys see there. But it doesn't matter, it's that top value, that 1188 for armor there, that's what you're going to be looking at. And then that applies to, you know, when you're looking at shards, it's that top stat value. Same thing when it comes to weapons, doesn't matter if it's a, a sword or a shield, a bow, a staff for the apprentice. A dagger for the mystic it doesn't matter okay it doesn't matter what weapon you just look at that top stat value and I'll even give you guys a good example real quick here of what I mean by so we'll look at one of my two squires I have I made two just for the purpose of you know the patch and I wanted a tanky like squire and he has that awesome kitty cat that one of the kind pervil and I got this thing beast at 60 out of 60 I just gotta work on the affection and yeah it has some pretty good storm damage and I don't know if this is a special uh, pet ability for it, but I like it now if we look on him right he has no shield but I do have a shield equipped on him now a shield has an armor stat value at the top and that's the one you keep in mind if you're if you like using the squire you know, as your main builder slash DPS character, whatever the case may be. When it comes to swords and shields, guys, they're, it's basically the same concept. You're looking at that top stat value, and that's the only thing you're keeping in mind when you're trying to figure out your average. 
So like I said, we'll go back here. We'll quickly swap that around. And there we go. Now, she has a new average armor rating, right? That's what we're looking at real quick here. She has a new average armor rating of 1,200, you might as well say. And that, along with all the other characters, is once again, like I said earlier, is going to greatly improve your gear drops, even if it's just by a little. Now with that patch, it's really going to make a difference. As you guys seen, like... And if anybody's wondering what I... I just get rid of all this. I only do one character at a time when it comes to the armor, okay? When it comes to relics and stuff, you know, I'll look at all the four characters I've equipped. But when it comes to armor, I'll only do one at a time because I, it's just too confusing if you try and, you know, swap this and swap that. But if you can do it, more power to you. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just, you know, a suggestion for me. But, yeah, um, other than that... I don't really know what I could, uh, what would be good to mention with this stuff for getting, trying to get better gear drops when grinding. Um, like I said, uh, the most important thing, pick four, four heroes. If you already have, only have four, well then, like I said, you don't got to worry about it. But if you have more than four, like I do, you know what I mean? It's kind of best just to pick four to keep working on the gear until you get to Chaos 7, right? And you max out there for those four characters. Because then at least from there, you can start maxing out other characters' gear and getting the better drops right then and there instead of having to constantly switch out more than four. Because could you imagine if I kept switching out more than four, like all these characters? That'd be madness. That's just crazy. It's, there's no point. I might as well just, you know, like I said, work on these four until I get to Chaos 7 and then consider, you know, working on all these other characters, you know, like, I really want my my EV2 to be a powerful DPS character, but as you guys can see, she doesn't got really, uh, she only, like, I, I really only focus on the, her relics, right, because I use the proton beams, I use the reflect beams, I do use the buff beams sometimes, not all the time. And I really use those weapon manis a lot, because those things are epic. Even if they, they did nerf them a little bit, you know, but eh, they still hit hard if you got a good medallion and some shards in there. But yeah, hopefully this helped you guys out. Well, anybody watching and has been in trouble with the grind. Alright, like, this is, you know, in my eyes... A better explanation than what Juice Bags did because he he went really complicated with it and he said focus on this and focus on that but the way I just pretty much explained it to everyone is that you, you only got to focus on one thing you can't be too finicky and you know just kind of try to focus on uh, blue the blue rated gear the most you know what I mean like if it's this blue rating here that's not bad because you, you always want certain shards slotted into your gear to help your character out, right? Whether they're basically just for building, you know, like a walling character. Like, you know, some people have the four original characters. They'll use the Squire as their main waller because he has pretty good walls if you actually work on them. Like, for example, I have him set up to be my waller. All the ascension points I got so far... I've been going into his spike blockades and his health so far. When I cap out his health, I'll work on, you know, the other, like these other abilities. But these are the two things I'm working on right now. But I'll show you guys this real quick. He's my Waller, right? And Zoro. I called him Zoro because I like the uh, anime One Piece, if anybody knows about that. And Zoro's pretty badass. He can do the projected slash, no problem. But yeah, Zoro is more of the other defenses, like the cannonball, you know, the... what the hell is it there? <laughs> I'll just show you guys. The ballista. That thing's gonna get all antsy and start shooting stuff. 
Yeah, I, I thought this pet ability was pretty cool. Big, big boulder that rolls over everything. And I got him set up for the training dummies too. Now, Tank here, he's rocking the new legendary kitty. And he's got a little bit of mixture between, you know, that new uh, skin customization you can get for free for the Squire right now. And I got a little bit of other things, you know, like that you can just get from... I'll show you where I got the other uh, customization pieces. Things you can buy, like, unlock through these stuff. So. Anyways, like I said, to the main point before I end this video. He's my Waller. Okay. And that's like 700. That's 705,000. And that's with just sharpened spikes and defense critical damage. I, I don't have an extra fortification shard yet to put in there. So that's pretty damn impressive if you ask me. You know what I mean? Like, I cannot complain about that. If I had a fortification shard, these would be just awesome. And yeah, this little kitty ability, short fuse, it's pretty cool. That leaves like, uh, what, what does it do here? Short fuse. Piercing orb deals 600% storm hero damage and 200% storm hero damage per second for 6 seconds. Cooldown is 1 minute. But you know, that's pretty, that's pretty good if you ask me. I like that. And he shoots little gold rockets too, which is pretty fancy. <laughs> An awesome little kitty cat. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. You know, my basically my explanation and in-depth tutorial on how to get better gear grinding. Hopefully it helps everyone out out there. And I will see you guys in the next episode when I have a really surefire way strategy for most of the Chaos 4 maps. I hope everyone has an amazing day out there. Yeah. <laughs>